We're looking from a lens of a couple of centuries in, in modern history. We're not looking at a very, very, very long-term lens, and I think some of the things here are speaking more to a long-term change in world geopolitics and world trade and world finance. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a topic today on the change in the gold trade. So a lot of what I talk about on Gold Silver Pros and our YouTube channel is the Great Reset and how things are changing in the gold market. I talked a lot about Basel III, the net stable funding ratio, and I'm kind of geeky with this stuff. I like to, I'm a former auditor, so I like to dive down into, deep into the paperwork that nobody likes to look at and find interesting stuff. And I think there are a lot of changes going on in the gold market. I think that the gold market's moving east, uh, much to China. I think they're trying to pull it out of London, and that's what some of the Basel III regulations are about. But also something very interesting happened as we were looking at ways in which the gold trade could shift. Uh, it seems as though Texas is becoming a big player. So uh, four things in regard to the Texas gold market. We're going to talk about the Texas Bullion Depository and how it's going global not just serving uh, Texas state residents. Talk about uh, the setup as an alternative to New York, and that was part of the original design that was admitted by the Texas Comptroller, which I did not know when they opened it in 2018. They're actually setting Texas Bullion Depository up as an alternative to th uh, the New York depositories. Uh, how Wall Street has approached Texas for moving uh, their markets, including NASDAQ, and we think potentially, you know, like the S&P and stuff, to Texas just outside of Austin, and how they're setting up data centers as infrastructure for all of this. So I'm kind of taking news from different places and putting it together and, and, and putting a thesis there. So we're going to talk about Texas first, and if I have time, we're going to talk about China, because I think there are two big moves going on. There's a shift within the United States, and then I think there's a shift from the traditional Western markets over more into the East. So this is from the Texas Comptroller's website, and uh, I'm just going to read this little snippet. It says, in summer 2018, Texas began operating the nation's only state-run bullion depository, a highly secure government-backed storage facility comparable to the U.S. bullion depository in Fort Knox, Kentucky, which holds federal gold reserves. So they're pretty serious about this. This is not your average, everyday, like, Brinks bullion depository. This is a, a pretty serious deal. Um, it says, now the Texas bullion depository, which experienced a surge of deposits during COVID, aims to provide its services to a wider range of clientele, making lasting first impacts that extend well beyond the Texas border. And I, and I originally read this article, and I was like, you know what, that's interesting. I thought it would just be for local uh, clients, people that wanted to store their bullion locally. But they admitted that the original design of this was to move the gold trade to Texas. And when you add this into them talking about moving the stock markets, it just seems like they're wanting to make Texas the focus of the financial center here in the United States. So here is another article from Texas Comptroller's website. I'm going to read the last two paragraphs of this. It says, in this issue, we also examine the Texas Bullion Depository, which is open for business in Leander, Texas, and that's just, I think, a little bit northwest of Austin, of the state capital. The Comptroller's office is responsible for its oversight and partners with Lone Star Tangible Assets to manage the facilities operations. When the Bullion Depository was preparing to launch in 2017, officials declared it would be an alternative to depositories located primarily in and around New York for precious metals owners seeking a storage vault. That's still true, but since then, the Bullion Depository has matured in important ways. And going further in that article, uh, we have here Macy Douglas, who's a depository administrator, but going further in that article, they go on to talk about it has a couple of options. It's tier three for gold. It also has lost storage for silver. They don't do silver as a tier three, which is a high security, because it takes so much silver, basically, uh, to equal the same amount of gold. So they're putting in a little bit lesser uh, secure area of the depository. But it is considered one of the safest depositories in the world. Uh, during the regular legislative session, the 87th legislator authorized the Texas uh, Public Finance Authority and the Bond Review Board to sell and issue bonds to finance the acquisition of the facility from LSTA and it seeks to address the long-term needs. So they're, you know, they're pretty serious about this. They're putting some debt behind it and, and, and involving state finances. What I found super interesting here and where I started digging more is they're talking about commodities. So they're talking about derivative markets. They're talking about potentially a replacement or a competitor for the COMEX, which is pretty big. We cover the COMEX a lot on our channel. We pay attention to it because that's really where spot prices are determined in the U.S. is the futures trade of COMEX. So it says here, in the world of financial trading, stock markets may readily come to mind. It's interesting they talk about stock markets, and we'll get into them potentially getting NASDAQ or NASDAQ talking to them. Arguably, more activity occurs daily in the commodities exchange market 
Food is one, one range. You're talking about agricultural products, beef, all of that kind of stuff. So not just talking about gold here. They're talking about all commodity derivatives, energy, agriculture, all of that stuff, potentially opening a market in Texas. This is huge because the markets that have been uh, in the United States have primarily been focused in the Northeast for, for as long as, as I can recall United States in my research. In the world, uh, let's see where we are. Commodities uh, includes metals, which hold both industrial and economic value. One of the largest exchanges is for U.S. metals trading Comex. They mention Comex specifically in the article on Texas Comptroller website, which originally stood for Commodity Exchange when it was founded in 1933, operates in New York. Comex licenses seven depository vaults in New York City and in Delaware. So they're setting up an alternative to Comex, and they're even telling you that they're setting up an alternative to Comex right here on the Texas government website. So very interesting. So that would not only be where gold could be stored, but where it's priced. And where it's priced, that's a lot of power, the, the, the pricing power for a commodity, because it's not only where the gold comes in, but trade is going to flow into that area in which people congregate to trade. And that's also how you control you know, how gold moves up and down is that derivative trade. Uh, go on further here. Uh, with the Texas Bullion Depository in operation, I'm about midway down. A push is building in Texas for commodities trading options outside of New York, according to State Representative, Representative Giovanni Capriglione. I hope I said that correctly. The author of the bill created the Texas Bullion Depository. Texas is ideally positioned both geographically and economically to become an epicenter for commodities trading. So when they set up the Bullion Depository, they were wanting, wanting to move commodities trading to New York. I find this very, very interesting. I'm sorry, to Texas. Why Texas, and, and why would there be an issue with New York? What, what could be the reasoning behind that? that? That's a fairly big move when you move a financial center, a world financial center, basically to the south or to another state. So here is an article that appeared at ksat.com as a local NBC affiliate, I believe, for Austin, Texas. And they were reporting on how Governor Greg Abbott was meeting with NASDAQ and other stock exchanges. I'm thinking, you know, S&P. Dow Jones, potentially, uh, last November 20th. So one of the reasons this came about was because the state of New Jersey wanted to tax some of the transactions that come into, I guess, their data centers for the markets. And the exchanges didn't like it. It would raise about $10 billion for the state of New Jersey, but they didn't want to pay like a per transaction tax. Every time there was a transaction on the market, they would pay so many cents, I think, was the scheme. And so that's part of the reason for them doing it. They don't want the government in New Jersey to to tax it, but I'm wondering where that taxing proposal came from. Because if you're the state of New Jersey and you're New York or where some of these other markets trade, why would you tax the golden goose? Why would you kill the golden goose? So being a bit of a historian in, in the way that financial situations are determined, you know, you look at Jekyll Island, the creation of the Federal Reserve, for example, who is actually behind the move to push these markets out of New York and why? And I think it's going to be interesting in the next few years if this takes place, if they do end up moving the NASDAQ down to Texas, potentially the other stock markets and the derivatives markets as well, seeing in the news who's actually pushing this and why. And to me, that's part of the great, great global reset. When we talk about the reset, we talk about not only fiat currencies, you know, potentially gold getting involved, maybe gold and silver revaluation, maybe the central bank digital currencies and how 50 central banks are aligning with the BIS to develop those central bank digital currencies led by China. And talk about how the IMF is going to move their world headquarters over to China in a few years. And talk about how Basel III is going to change the gold market in London. Possibly pull a lot of that trade out of London maybe into China. And we'll talk about China here in a moment. Um, there, there's a lot going on and who's doing this. I think the news over the next two or three years is going to be fascinating. To see why they're not only doing this in gold, but they're doing it for the rest of the financial sector at the same time. It's not just about gold. It's about all of our financial system and how that system runs and who controls it and why. And so I think there's going to be an incredible amount of news around this. This is getting almost zero press. We've talked about it on our website, on, on our website and our YouTube channel. I don't see anybody else talking about this. But this is huge. This goes beyond just uh, the pricing power of gold. This goes beyond, you know, debates that we had yesterday on Bitcoin versus gold. I mean, this is the world financial system. This is where prices are determined. This is where billions and, you know, even trillions of dollars move through you know, for, for the mortgage markets, for the stock market, all of these things where interest rates are determined, where a lot of this stuff goes on. This is big stuff. Here we go. A little bit more from KSAT, the article. Officials from NASDAQ and other major stock exchanges will meet with Governor Greg Abbott on November 20th in Austin to discuss a possible move from New Jersey to Texas. 
the meeting, and this is reported by Dallas Morning News, which is the major uh, uh, newspaper in Dallas, as well as NBC DFW, which is the uh, NBC affiliate Channel 5 in, in Dallas as well. The meeting comes on the heels of the exchanges threatening to move their trading platforms out of New Jersey, and that's because of the taxing scheme that New Jersey has came up, came up with for those trading platforms. According to the Dallas Morning News, Abbott's office has been talking with NASDAQ and other exchanges about moving their day centers to Dallas because of potential tax on financial transactions. The proposal uh, tax would charge a quarter of a cent per financial transactions at entities in New Jersey that process at least 10,000 transactions. And of course, you don't want to pay a tax on your transactions because it reduces, it plays havoc with all of your trading schemas because if you're putting a tax in there and you're trading a lot of trades which make a little bit of money, that taxation could ruin that trade and it could affect all of your algorithms, uh, all of your trading strategies, Every, everything that you have set up. So I understand why they would want to do it. And on the heels of that, uh, Element Critical expands Texas President with Austin Data Center acquisition. So this data center, as the article goes on to talk about Yahoo Finance, is capable of handling these type of stock markets. So at the same time Governor Abbott is talking about this, a big data center company is coming in refurbishing some existing data centers to make them uh, capable of handling this trade so that they could, you know, rival the ones up in New Jersey and New York. So very interesting. A lot of this infrastructure is already being put into place. And then, of course, Tennessee gets in the act. Tennessee would be the second state to establish a bullion repository if they do. Their Senate voted 32 to 0 to explore the possibility, which means they're probably going to do something. So if you think about it, bullion depositories moving south, one in Texas, one in Tennessee, you've got redundancy there. You've got two options there. It seems to me that potentially the gold trade could be moving south. And there are some resources we had. This is just the presentation I did on YouTube. Uh, if we could load the other presentation on China, please. So uh, while she's loading the presentation on China, any questions about what we had on NASDAQ or anything moving to Texas? Yes. I'm not trying to get off the weeds about secession and stuff like that. Yeah. Potentially, there's a big secession movement. I don't, you know, honestly, I don't know with the, with the Democratic presence in the state growing like it is if we ever could get a secession vote in Texas. But it, could it be that certain states are aligning with each other and there could be like a bifurcation in the financial markets that may have something to do with political realignment that's going on in the country? Yes. I mean, that's possible for sure. That's my question, because taxes are an issue, but that's not something that's been settled, it's been proposed. And for the exchanges to go off really quickly and say, we want to move to Texas, to me, that's a, I agree with you, I think the taxes is a narrative. Is that strong a, enough of a narrative to explain why they're considering moving the financial center south? I don't think so. I think there's other stuff there, and that's why I think the news is going to be very interesting while we'll be following it. Well, I'm, I'm search scraping the internet right now for just whatever I can find about this. Yes. Like a bank closure, but for like the stock markets? Everything. Yeah. Well, part of the Great Reset is, is not only a currency reset, it would, wouldn't it be a market reset as well? It would be a revaluation of everything. So maybe this is in preparation for that potentially, I don't know. But my question is why Texas? I live in Texas, why Texas? Texas has never been considered a financial center. We have financial services companies. Um, I think Schwab moved some of their you know, financial services down, but we're just talking like brokerages. So it's interesting. And what, what is the, you know, what is the impetus behind Texas specifically? There's something else behind that, I think, that has to do with geopolitical realignment and, and, and those types of factors. But I can't, I can't find enough information on it. So if anybody knows, email me at Robert Gold Silver Pros. Any other questions? Yes. Sea, 
I think, I, I know one of them is underground, yeah. Well, to defend our, our good governor in the state of Texas, I, I would disagree with you. I don't think he's trying to take over the world or anything, but I do think he's very pro-business. He pro-business to the point of he'll do anything to keep business in Texas. That includes giving tax incentives and things like that. So pro-business means we're open for business in Texas, and he is very much an advocate of that. I don't know that you could control business from Texas. Texas was at one point the eighth largest economy, you know, in, in the world, and that was probably 10 years ago. I don't know what it is now by itself. So I, I don't think, and that was before Governor Greg Abbott. That was just because Texas is an awesome place to live. Um, but, I, you know, I, I don't think we need Governor Abbott to control the world. And, and personally, I don't know if he's doing a deal with the devil. I don't want the markets to move to Texas personally because that brings the banking industry down here, and I don't want it. If you think about the money that goes into lobbying, who is now controlling the governorship if Wall Street moves to Texas? And would what happened to New York with their political system also happen in Texas? That's what I don't want to see, personally. That's just my personal opinion. Appreciate it.